We're gonna give you our F1 2022 season predictions in this episode. We're gonna be talking about our favorite teams, favorite drivers, and what to expect coming from this coming F1 season. I'm with Mike from DRS North. We're gonna be breaking down the season, our top favorite drivers, dark horse picks, and our constructor championship predictions. So let's get started. I think we just came out of, by the way, the Drive to Survive season four. If you haven't seen, we did a full review of that season. I'll link that in the card above. But now we're gonna go ahead, take some of these predictions into the 2022 calendar year and season. I think there's a lot of changes that are happening. I think there's a lot of stuff with the cars, the changes have happened. I think it's done a lot to the field. Let's kick it off, Mike. Let's talk about some of these teams. Obviously, we're coming out from a Red Bull championship win. A lot of controversy out of the last season, going into this new season. We're in testing today. Lots of these cars and the changes for the new season with the lower profile tires, the aerodynamics, a whole bunch of this stuff. What are your thoughts just generally about the season and what should we should expect? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really exciting uh, with all the new regulation changes, like you said, totally new cars. So you definitely have the potential for, you know, a complete dark horse. Um, I think a lot of, you know, rumors spinning around and from looking at testing, I think, you know, Ferrari is going to perform stronger than they did last year. Um, overall, I do still think overall the field will look pretty similar-ish, like in terms of the order from my predictions, and then we can kind of go through that later. But yeah, definitely exciting to see it. And, you know, I'm not sure how it's going to look at the start of the race. I guess we'll kind of see at the start of the season. I think that this season will be similar to the last season, that it won't necessarily, like Mercedes started weaker in the 2021 season and then kind of got to contestion at the very end. And I think right. you'll have a similar thing this season, not necessarily with Mercedes, but whoever starts the season strong might not be the one who finishes on top. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think through testing, we're seeing a lot of these manufacturers are still and the drivers figuring out these cars, right? These are some significant changes that have happened. I think you're generally right. In my prediction, it's gonna be, we're gonna see Mercedes and Red Bull, I think obviously dueling it for the championship. There's gonna be a lot there, but I think Ferrari, I think McLaren personally are gonna give more competition up to the top of the field with some of these changes. I know Ferrari has been investing in R&D a lot. I think what we're gonna see is hopefully you know, Daniel Ricardo, Lando Norris maybe coming up to the plate and stepping up beyond what they did in the previous season. I think there's a lot of potential for a lot of these other teams down, you know, in the midfield and at the bottom to make a lot of noise. Like, you know, Valtteri Bottas now with Alfa Romeo, right? We have Haas, you know, with Magnussen now, you know, that's a bit of a wild card dark horse opportunity there. Uh, you know, what we're seeing with uh, Alfa Turi, two really great drivers, you know, same engine as the Red Bull with the Honda. There's a lot of opportunity there. Let's not discount Alpine. I think we will have generally a more competitive field because I think there's a lot less that these teams can control, especially in the beginning until they figure out these cars. I guess that's what it comes down to is who will figure out these cars faster because it's obvious to me that in testing, they're still all for the most part trying to figure out what's working and what's not. For sure. I mean, I couldn't agree more. And I think that will be the purpose of these regulations is to bring cars to be able to race closer together and make overpassing easier. And, and I, I hope that it will deliver on that. And my hope is that it's not a two driver uh, race. I hope that it's a four or five driver race, even if, you know, Hamilton and Max are still ahead. Maybe the other guys still have a chance by mid season First last season. It was kind of like there's there, it's only these two that can win. Uh, and I hope that it's even from potentially four constructors. Like it's not just like Checo and Russell up there with Max and um, right. and Hamilton. I hope that, you know, some Ferrari in there, some McLaren in there, or maybe even like you said, a dark horse from Alvatore or Alpine or something. Right. So let's get right into the meat of this. Okay. No more of this kind of fluff. Who is going to be the biggest loser this season? I'm going to start with who I think is going to be the biggest loser. And I hate to say this, but I think it's going to be Mick Schumacher. I haven't seen him really put up anything of note. Understand he's still very young. Understand he's a Schumacher. I think he's going to be the big loser this season. I'm going to pass it over to you, but then we're going to pick the winners and the constructors and some predictions. Perfect. For me, the person I have at the bottom is Zhao from Alfa Romeo. 
I think, you know, being a new driver to F1 um, and a lot of pressures from being the first Chinese driver, I think it's going to be, you know, a, a big shoes to fill and the pressure is being a young guy. Uh, he might not deliver as much as people are expecting, but I do think that there is a strong potential, you know, in the long run for him. Okay, let's go to the championship winner. Now, I think it's going to be Lewis Hamilton. That's my prediction, and I'm a Max Verstappen fan, and I just think Lewis Hamilton is just really good at what he does, okay? Um, I think he's going to come back and take it. I think he was sandbagging a little bit in the testing. I think he's already made some public comments that he can't really figure things out. I don't think he's going to allow Mercedes to not figure things out. I think he's going to win the championship this season. That's my top line prediction. I that's that that's who I have as well. Um, but like I mentioned, I think you know Adrian Newey uh, from Red Bull is a genius, and I think you know Red Bull is going to be one of the teams to kind of figure that out early. So I wouldn't be surprised if you have uh, potentially Max leading on the earlier part of the season uh, for Hamilton to kind of take over at the end. Yeah, and you know what? I'm going to be curious to see. I don't know if we've seen enough testing to make a conclusion here, but last season to me it was clear that Mercedes had more power especially in the straights. And I think that helped Hamilton a lot. I don't know if that's going to be the case again this year. My assumption is that is that, that will continue, but we will find out, I guess. For sure. Okay, so who is your constructors pick? I'll flip this over to you. You go with the constructors now. Uh, for me, I have uh, Mercedes again as well. Um, so I actually have the, uh, the double championship to Mercedes this year. That's a big one with George Russell. I mean, I think Russell has so much potential. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, I think you can see how well he performed when he had to backfill for Hamilton. I think that was in 2020 when uh, he had COVID. Um, and he just performed exceptionally. And the only reason he lost was because of the tire changes. Otherwise, right. he showed that he was the better driver uh, than Bottas, actually, in that race. And he probably could have won that. And that's his first time ever being in the seat on an F1 race and being at the front row. Yeah, that, that's pretty crazy. Have to, you know, agree with that. I think for winners, for the constructors, they're definitely up there. Um, now, in terms of maybe the dark horse to get, you know, up to the standings in the constructors between McLaren and Ferrari, who do you think is going to win in that race? I think, personally, I think Ferrari probably has the edge, but I think there might be some magic that comes out of McLaren this year. I hope. That's what I'm hoping for and they overtake Ferrari, but it's gonna be a duel. This is gonna be a, a duel to watch. Yeah, I hope it's a similar duel to, to last year. And then, like you said, hopefully we throw in another team like Alpatari, but uh, my money is on Ferrari for this season as well. I mean, from a driver personality and team as a whole, or even honestly cars that I would wanna drive if I had the money, I mean, my money would go towards the McLaren, but I do think yeah. that Ferrari is gonna take it for the 2022 season. Right. And uh, I love the Ferrari colors. Like, oh, God, the cars look so good in that Ferrari red. Uh, looking, Just looking at them and testing is just so beautiful. For sure. But speaking of Ferrari, the thing that I think that I'm going to go against the prediction that most of are making is I would put my money on signs over Leclerc in terms of I think he's going to place. Ah. I think he's going to place higher on the driver's uh, standings than Leclerc will. Interesting. I think they're both great drivers. And I think a lot of people actually choose Charles over Carlos in the most cases, but it's a coin flip. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Both very competitive. Um, let's talk about though, the prediction for Aston Martin. My question is, are they going to have any success this year? Or are they going to be forgotten just like they were forgotten and drive to survive? <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I don't, I don't have, I don't think this is their year either. I think that this can be easily a year that they're kind of forgotten. I think where they're kind of around that, you know, fifth sixth place kind of thing maybe kind of competing with alpine like they were last year but i don't necessarily think that uh, this is their year to shine um, i think that they're investing a lot you know with all their facilities and eventually they're gonna maybe come out of nowhere i just don't think it's the 2020 season 2022 season maybe it's 2024 yeah. you know it's in the near future that they're gonna come out of nowhere but i just don't think it's this year yeah and the canadian lance stroll obviously and then you have sebastian vettel um you know vettel hasn't didn't do anything crazy last season right in aston martin um you know lance stroll nothing of you know no in my opinion too much but we'll see what happens i hope they make a splash i think this year we're gonna find more of these teams 
you know, come up and vie into the midfield, maybe come up and, you know, take some points that you wouldn't expect. I hope Aston Martin's one of them. You know, Alpha Turi, what are we going to see out of Pierre Gasly and Yuki Tsunoda? That'll be interesting, right? The sister team, will they come up a little bit more? Will they make an impact? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think overall, they're you know going to be like I said similar story to last year. But I hope with the closer racing and the strong just ability of these these athletes, that you know I wouldn't be surprised if we saw you know a couple Alpha Tori podiums or even some Aston Martin podiums or Alpine t podiums. But again, they're still going to be you know that fifth, sixth, seventh place overall in the constructors. And then there's Valtteri Bottas in Alfa Romeo. <laughs> I honestly have no idea what to expect here. Dong Zhu Zhao. You know, obviously new to F1, not so sure. Valtteri Bottas though, I think he'll take some podiums. I hope. I like Valtteri Bottas. I think he's a great driver. The big prediction. I think, I think he makes a podium for sure this season. I think so. We'll see. Hold me on this prediction. We'll see if I'm right or not. But I like it. One a podium finish somewhere for Valtteri Bottas this season for Alfa Romeo. Um, and then Haas. Do you think anything changes for Haas other than sadness and disappointment like from last season? <laughs> yeah, I mean <laughs> I get worse. I, I definitely think that they'll, you know, take a strive. If I recall, they got zero points last year, right? It must um, be like honestly, it was a horrific so i i could definitely see them potentially getting points uh but i think overall yeah they got zero i think overall it will be still a disappointment um but like i mentioned i think in our drive to survive episode you know with you know kevin magnuson i think being a bit more of a i guess influence and a help to schumacher i think that you'll see schumacher you know improve throughout the season more than he did last year for fighting with his teammate right um, and i would be not be surprised at all like i said if there's a couple couple races to get points in but I don't foresee any podiums or anything of that sort. Right. And then the Williams team. We we really didn't talk too much about Williams. What's going to go on with Nicholas Latifi and Alex Albin and Williams? I think bottom feeders again, in my opinion. Yeah, I think my prediction would be the exact same for them in terms of, you know, couple couple races of points, but no podiums. Um, I mean, I personally am a big fan of Alex Albon. I think he did pretty good in Red Bull as well um, when he was on the parent team. But again, I, I don't see any podiums in their future. Yeah. Okay. And then Alpine, what do you think about their chances? In terms of, you know, again, I, I wouldn't be surprised if both of those drivers, you know, potentially have an option of seeing podiums throughout the season, um, or at least one of them. Uh, definitely points, maybe more regular than it was last year, but um, no chance in, in, you know, even the top three, in my opinion. Yeah. And this is going to be interesting. I think the changes they've made this season are for the better for the sport. I think it's going to be more exciting. You're going to have more people vying for the top of the field. I think you'll have different drivers winning the podiums, which will be better and add to the competition generally across F1. So I'm excited. That means there's going to be a lot more exciting battles happening. It means not every race. It's just going to be a Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen show. We're going to be able to see the other drivers come in and actually showcase their skill at the most premier motorsporting events in the world. Um, so I'm really excited for this season. And honestly, I'm really pumped up for everything that's in store for all of these drivers and for the teams. For sure, I can't wait. And, and that's the hope, right? Is that it's not a two man horse. It's, you know, like I said, a four or five, six man horse, even for the, the driver's championship from three, four different teams, not just yeah. the same two guys on the same two teams going forward. For sure. It's going to be super interesting. So obviously we're going to find out what's going to happen. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and follow DRS North. We're going to be covering all of the F1 races, everything to do with F1. We're going to be covering on this channel. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like this video if you liked it. And again, we'll catch you guys in the next videos that are coming up. Really looking forward to the first inaugural race of the 2022 season. We'll be following up on all of these races and giving our forecast and analysis throughout the season. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.